What up, dudes? It's Gaz, and welcome back to another Warframe video. So, at long last, we have the updated Profit Taker Guide, basically post Jade Shadows. Not a lot of people realize that the Profit Taker meta has changed ever since the Jade Shadows update a few months ago, and here we're covering it today. It was definitely a big wake up call to get some of these builds changed, but yeah. Here we are, and let's get right into it. But before we do, make sure to sub this channel, do daily Warframe video uploads, build videos, news videos, discussion videos, all that kind of stuff in their place, Warframe content. And yeah, this guide is for solo Chroma. Technically, you could do it in a squad too, but yeah, keep in mind that Chroma can double the credits of the Profit Taker with their fourth ability, but they are not the fastest in the whole game. Mirage, Vault, and like Saren can be faster than Chroma technically, but yeah, double credits is double credits. Let's get right into it. So we're going to first take you through a full run of the Profit Taker with this build. I'm going to explain all the things in motion and basically what each individual mod is used for. Because that's kind of how this fight works. The long and short of it is basically Simon says for elements. Uh, and once you break the uh, shield of the Profit Taker, its legs and body are going to be uh, destroyable by Arcwing guns. Technically you can use Heavy Arcwing Gun Launcher. But the strat I'm going to be showing today is going to be using the Necromech, which is not going to have Chroma's damage buff, so be aware of that. One reason why Volt is faster, Volt Electric Shield can apply to Arcwing Guns and make it do a lot more damage against this thing. And as far as the big changes that were made in the JHN update, it was mainly to the enemy resistances and weaknesses. So if you didn't know this, the Corpus no longer have like, you know, five different things they resist and three different things they're weak to, etc, etc. They are now just straight up... Weak to Magnetic and Puncture, okay? So when you're fighting the PT's legs, the Profit Taker's legs, you want to now have your Arcwing gun modded for Magnetic. And if you can get Puncture on there too, it's great. So yes, no longer is Radiation the meta for one-shotting the Profit Taker. And unfortunately for me, and probably for some of you as well, that means my old Riven was basically junk. Because the old meta was Radiation, I had a Fire or Heat Riven to make it where it was Radiation damage. There's also a Radiation Multi-Shot mod, too. Now, Magnetic is the change. So hopefully you had an Electric Riven, because Fire Rivens are pretty much useless now. So that being said, if you do get a Riven for this thing, what should you go for now with the new changes? You should be going for Bane of the Corpus, Crit Stats, and Multi-Shot. I'm still using the exact same guns as before, but we have to do a little bit more damage than before now, too, because not only was the resistances of this thing changed, but also the overall HP of the leg has been changed, too, because Corpus got overall more HP. So, beyond that, don't forget that Smita was changed. You can call it a nerf, you can call it a buff, whatever you want to call it. It's To me, it's a nerf. It no longer is the meta for this, either. I have switched from the Smita, which used to give double credits and double, like, toroids and stuff, to the Adarza, which gives me a crit buff somewhat reliably. That also being said, any Beast Companion can double credits now with the appropriate mods. Uh, also, a little bit of a double-edged sword here, you have to either choose if you want the 18% doubling of credits, the 18% doubling of toroids, or the 13% for both. So I'll show you that when we get to the cat build, but basically as you can see in the footage, guys, I'm just doing a quick run through here. We beat this in about, I think the thing died in like 2 minutes, 11 seconds or something like that. And after, after you kill the Profit Taker, it's the exact same strat as before. If you're playing Chroma to double the credits, after the second stumble of the Profit Taker after you kill it, go to the back left leg and place your Chroma Pelt. It works for your entire team. They have to be, they have to be pretty close to you, though, is the thing. So as long as you're within 10 meters of the Chroma Pelt, you will get the doubled up credits. And if your Smita or whatever kind of cat you're bringing your Darza is being nice to you, it will double them again. So, yeah. Additionally, you could buy things like credit boosters in the market, or go to the relay for the uh, M Master Rank 30 credit booster to get even more credits. So, without the uh, Resourceful Retriever mod, I've got 250k credits from this, and it would be about 340k, I believe, with the relay blessing. So, other ways to multiply even more, double credit weekends that sometimes happen, and that's one of the main things. Okay, so... As far as every little thing to cover every element of the game, because that's what we need to do here, let's start off with Chroma himself. And yes, one of the reasons I was dreading to remake this video is because we have to explain every single build, basically, uh, in great detail. It is just a lot of explaining. So first, first starting off with my Chroma, keep in mind this is my Chroma build, which is just the one I use, 
not like any special thing here. We're going maximum power strength chroma with the nourish ability from Grendel. Since we have to cover every element in the game to damage this thing's shields, this will give us viral on every weapon. So I don't need to mod for viral on anything. Additionally, Chroma's second ability, Elemental Ward, we are on Toxin with a Toxin Elemental like fashion frame thing. This will make it where we get crazy holster damage when we switch weapons. That holster damage makes you able to shred the PT shield very, very quickly. Also gives you some reload speed too, which is not as important, but still pretty decent. And the third ability, Vex Armor, is going to give us a ton of extra damage. Uh, and they actually did change it where Chroma can actually build his damage buff from getting ranged kills, but we're trying to speedrun this, so the less enemies we're killing that aren't the PT, the better. So, we are actually going to be using some special items to make sure we get this buff even easier, because the way you normally get this damage buff is you take health damage. But shield getting can make that a little bit annoying. And the final ability, the main reason we're playing Chroma, Effigy, it has a chance to give you extra credits. It's actually, it's actually 100%, but it says 60% here for some reason. Alright, so as far as Chroma's build... It's going to be big power strength and big duration. We've also got Holster Amp to go on top of our uh, our Toxic Elemental Ward. But yes, as far as explaining this stuff here, since we've got Nourish, we have an Energy Multiplier. So I threw an Energy Nexus here to give us like 12 Energy Regen per second. We could easily recast our abilities, no issues at all, uh, as there's not really that many Nullifiers here either. Triple Umbra mods on Chroma, it's pretty much the way it's supposed to be. Uh, so we have lots of armor, lots of health, and that these armor and health stats will actually make our cat more tanky because we have Link uh, armor and health on our cat too. Arcade Nullifier, because you could, are normally taking a lot of status procs during this, our uh, magnetic procs, this will prevent magnetic procs, which is pretty nice. And Arcane Grace, more of a comfort arcane. You could technically go for something else for more damage, but yeah, you're taking so much damage. And also, if I show you the item we're using later, we are taking health damage constantly. This will give us constant health regen, which is also percent health regen, which scales pretty well with all this, this HP. The rest of the stuff, just power, strength, and duration. Prime sure footed because you get knocked down constantly here. Now, there are the energy walls of the PT will still knock you down, even with this, hilariously. But uh, if you do have it, you should run. Now, moving on to... And also, oh, by the way, one thing too. Since we have to take damage uh, for Chroma's third, do not have Dante. Overguard is really, really bad for Chroma because you can't actually get your buff easily in this fight. So, no Dante Spectres. No Dante to back you up for help. If, if Dante is there, he better not be casting Overguard. You're not getting your buff. You're going to be doing no damage at all. Speaking of taking damage really quickly, let's go ahead and talk about this part really quick. We have a special Decaying Dragon Key equipped here. Remember this, when it used to be the meta, it would make your shield gate better? Well, now it makes your shield gate worse all the time, but it also greatly reduces your shields, which is what we want. My shields are reduced by the de Decaying Dragon Key, so I don't have any shield gate, which is good, because I'm so tanky with my health, and I can actually get my Chroma Vex Armor damage buff a lot easier. So right there, 93 shields, only a .33 second shield gate. That's literally perfect. I want them to damage my health, so I can get that damage buff a lot easier. All right, so moving on to the primary, we've got the... Kuva Ogress. This is used to shoot through the pylons uh, to directly damage them without having to fly into the pylon. As far as element, we've got tox or I've got fire, but any element should work. But just make sure you have a pretty high percentage so you can do the most damage possible to those pylons. The build might look kind of weird, but since we got Chroma's damage buff, we don't really need any damage mods to that extent, uh, to a big extent. So you might also notice there's no prime firestorm right here. You don't need it either. The biggest things we're going for here are magazine size with tainted mag and prime magazine warp. And then some fire rates, so we can actually fire these rockets at those pylons really quick. Nightwatch Napalm is also very, very important for this build. The rest of it, not really necessary, or not really a big deal, but I've got a multi-shot damage riven too. And Arcane Mer uh, Primary Merciless to reload the rocket launcher faster. So yeah, uh, this is pretty much just what we use to shoot to the pylons. This gun is not used to, to shoot the prop taker at all, okay? The damage this thing does to the prop taker is hardly anything at all in the first place. So don't, th this, is your, this is your pylon destroyer, not your PT destroyer. Keep that in mind. But it is very, very good at what it's here for. Blasting those pylons from outside the pylon. Okay, so we need to cover every element in the game. How are we going to do that? We can, we can finally move on to the actual weapons that are used to damage here. So let's start off with the main DPS weapon for most of the elements here. The Tenet Diplos. This is going to come from the Corpus Lich Sister situation. And we've got a 60% magnetic Tenet Diplos. This is the best element to go for on this thing. And as far as the build, before we look at the build, though, look at, so like I said, we have to cover every element in the game. Look at how much we have on just this thing alone. So we've got corrosive, puncture, impact, heat, radiation, slash, and magnetic. We are covering so much, because when I say you have to cover element, you have to cover every physical type of damage as well. So we can cover a good chunk of them with this build. Unfortunately, 
this is where the Riven start coming into account. Because if you don't have a Riven that has double element to get easy element like that, you might not have as strong of a build. It will still be okay, but we're trying to get as many elements on here as possible, so a double elemental ribbon really, really helps. But as far as the mods that are going to get all these crazy amounts of stats, we have magnetic built into our Diplos because that's the base element we got. But this thing is considered a corpus. So we got Prime Expel Corpus because it works, basically. Crit mods because this thing has good crit, and a crit corrosive ribbon is quite helpful here. Additionally, we've got the mod Accelerated Isotope, which gives us built-in radiation damage, which will not combine. So, very, very good stuff. If we get any more combined uh, elementals in the future that are mods like this, it will probably change the build. But for right now, yeah, this is the only one we got, which is giving radiation. So, we've got Corrosive from this mod, Radiation from this mod, and Heat from this mod. Uh, we've got every element covered, technically, and this is a big part of our damage right here. We, whenever we're shooting the PT... This is likely the weapon we are using, and yeah, no galvanized mods because we're not going to be trying to kill trash ads for this. The arcane does not really matter, but merciless just in case you do have to reload it. This thing can auto reload while holstered, so keep that in mind too. And never ADS this thing because it gets terrible, terrible like locked in fire rate basically. So just hit fire, spam shot this thing, and switch to your other weapons, and it will auto reload while it's holstered. Uh, holstered. Yeah, a very, very important weapon right there. I'm moving on to a important weapon, but not as important as that Diplo. So we got the uh, the Plague Kiwar Zaw. And as far as the parts on here, I've got Plague Aquin, Plague Kiwar, and Vargit Tujai. If you want to do a different um, a different Zaw that's also really good, I've got this one right here, the Sikala Rabvi Vargit Tujai. The Rabvi has the highest Riven stats out of any uh, Zaw. So that's going to be the highest ribbon stats possible. Go for stats like Anti-Corpus, Attack Speed, and things of that nature. We're using Exodia Contagion to launch ranged attacks through our melee at the Profit Taker. So as far as the elements on this one, we've got Toxin as the main element here. Uh, but yeah, that, it, you can technically switch it around to other elements, but this is the one I've chose here to cover as much as possible. We've got the Radiation Mod Focused Radon. We've got Prime Bay of the uh, Prime Smite of the Corpus. You might remember this thing counts as the Corpus. And we technically got melee exposure on here, which will give corrosive damage when we cast abilities. We will be casting abilities somewhat regularly. So this thing can actually be backup to cover a bunch of elements because we've got corrosive from exposure, Exodia Contagion has built-in blast, and we've got toxin from our mod. Not to mention the radiation mod on here too. And the Plague Zaws have Viral built in as well. But don't forget, don't forget, we have Nourish. Everything has Viral, so don't worry about that. That's why Robby could be okay here. But yeah, big stuff here is going to be just basically using Exodia Contagion. So after we jump, we can launch a projectile that does a lot of damage. And it will be what covers our Toxin damage for our uh, loadout. So the Exos mod does not matter, but I've got this on here, Dispatch Override. And yeah, the Riven also does not matter, but Attack Speed is very good to get out of those Exodia Contagions a lot quicker. Okay, so we've got Matter Eye Focus Tree, and yes, Matter Eye Focus Tree is actually important for this, as our operator loadout is very, very particular. Matter Eye Focus Tree, Void Strike, when we use the first ability of Matter Eye, we massively increase our operator's damage, and we will be using that when the when the prop ticker tells us to damage it with Electric, because we have the Amp Arcane called Virtuous Surge, I think it's called. It's the operator arcane that gives you electric damage on your amp. Let's see if I can get my operator in here and show you guys that. Okay, so we go to Equipment, we go to Operator, and as far as the amp that's being used, it is relatively important here. Now, I'm not saying the, the exact prism I'm using is the only one that will work, but we got the 147 amps, the Replac uh, prism. Now, as far as the amp arc I'm talking about here, we've got Virtuous Surge, uh, converting 98% of void damage to electric damage on hit. So that will be how we cover electric damage on the PT. Additionally, Eternal Onslaught on Energy Depleted, Massive crit chance for your amp. So we're using Void Strike to drain all of our energy, and then the, the amp damage is electric and void technically. So you can still rotate the Prop Taker Shield if you shoot it with this, but um, it will also do a massive chunk of electric damage too. So this is one of the best ways to do that if you don't have a Volt on your team. So yeah, as Solo Chroma, this is a very, very good amp arcane for the purposes of this mission. Um, yeah, just keep that in mind though, that if you don't have that amp arcane, you will not have electric covered, unfortunately. Which is why maybe being friends with a Volt could be a good idea. Okay, so let's now that we've covered uh, that part, the focus of the operator, let's move on to the last few items we have here that were not already covered, uh, starting with the the Adarza Kavat. So yeah, now that Smita is no longer necessary or like even good for this anymore, the Adarza Kavat 
is going to be a relatively consistent damage buff. The big thing here is that we've got Cat's Eye giving us increased crit chance for our weapons, which will help for a little bit more damage. But the other thing here as well is that the Retriever mod, is, this is where you have to make your own decision. I, I can only guide you so much here. So if you are farming for credits, remember this thing drops multiple items. So Prosperous Retriever is an 18% chance to double up credits, and it will it will double the credits of the Prop Taker that it drops at the end if you have it, if it basically if the 18% procs for you. But if you care about maybe Toroids for rep more and also the debt bonds the Prop Taker drops, you can run Resource Retriever. Or if you're feeling lucky, you could maybe run Loyal Retriever instead, which has a chance to drop uh, to double both of them, but it's only 13% per type of item. So again, it's it's a lower chance, but it is also technically possible to do both. The fun thing about Speed Up before is if it was proc, it would double both of them no matter what. But yeah, this is the the new version of Warframe we have right here. So yeah, if you really care about credits a lot, which this thing drops a lot of them, Prosperous Retriever. If you only care about, oh, I think we all care a little about the credits. If you care more about the toroids and vet bonds, but resourceful. If you feel like a really lucky player that wants to get both of them doubled, then go Loyal Retriever. And yeah, good luck with that. The rest of the build, though, is just to make sure the thing stays alive. We've got Link Fiber and Link Vitality. Since our our Chroma has so much armor and health, this makes the cat pretty tanky. And the rest of the stuff is pretty straightforward stuff. Tenacious Bond to get more crit damage on our frame. I would love to put Reinforced Bond on here, but unfortunately, this cat doesn't have enough uh, shields to do that. And of course, you could run a Reinforced Bond campaign on a different setup, but you might not have the doubled up resources, so just be aware of that. And the claws don't matter, just make sure you have enough crit chance to get uh, over the Tenacious Bond amount, which is 50%. All right, so I've been doing a lot of talking about non-Arcwing Gun here. Let's talk about the thing that actually got changed in the meta. That's going to be the Arc Gun build. So, if you remember what I said before, the Corvus Prime does not work for this the same way as the Corvus Normal. The Corvus Prime is an entirely different weapon function-wise, because Corvus Prime is basically an Archiplasmor shot, whereas the Corvus Normal is a pellet shotgun. And the pellet shotgun is what we're looking for here today to make sure we can actually get confirmed hits on the enemy. That being said, I am not joking when I said they made this thing more tanky. If you are solo Chroma and you don't have a God Roll Riven, it might not be a very easy one-shot. So as far as one-shotting the PT now with solo Chroma, you need to use critical focus and aim down sights and fully charge your Corvus. Additionally, the Rivens, uh, are the old Rivens might not work. If you have a Riven like this, it will, that was your old Riven, it will still work. But yeah, the big thing here, guys, go for as much magnetic damage as possible. And if the weapon has a bunch of puncture, even better. But yeah, biggest thing here, these weapons do not normally have Bane of the Corpus as a... Uh, type of mod, as you can see, no Corpus Bane. So that's why having a Riven that has anti-Corpus damage on it is very, very important, especially with these newly buffed PT legs that have more health. So very important stuff. If you don't have a Riven for it, it is going to be a lot less damage. But keep in mind, in the long run, it is very, very worth getting a Riven if you plan to do this like you know, hundreds and hundreds of times. As far as the rest of the build, we've got both the primed uh, arc gun mods, primed Rubino line barrel, and primed dual rounds. And we've got uh, just a ton, a ton of crit and a ton of uh, magnetic damage. So, yeah. If you are if you have a, a Volt on your team, have them put up the electric shield and you can shoot through it and maybe not the charge or ADS. But yeah, for solo Chroma, it is pretty rough out there. So just be aware of that. Now, you could call on the heavy arc gun launcher and that'll be a guaranteed one shot, but it's a lot slower when you're doing, you're trying to do these DPS phases as quickly as possible. As far as the mech build itself, I don't even, I'll be honest, I haven't looked at this thing in a while, but looks like just like a bunch of mods on here. Um... You're going to be in the mech for probably about, like, 15 seconds anyway. So, as long as it doesn't instantly die, that's all that really matters. So, yeah. Um, that is going to be basically the Prop Taker Guide. Um, and as I said earlier, you can get more credits from this if you uh, get the Relay Blessing and stuff. So, now that we've talked about all these things, let's go, uh, let's go through that PT run one more time. And we can talk about what's happening in real time here. So, I immediately grabbed the bounty, the Stage 4 Prop Taker Bounty that requires Rank 5 to get to. And then once you grab it, just run to the door. Uh, it can take a little bit of time to load, depending on like what if it's like lagging or anything like that. But once you get out there, activate your Nourish ability. Once you activate your Nourish ability, consider dropping an Energy Pad to get full energy. If not, Energy Nexus will hook you up in a few seconds. Uh, jump into your Arcwing, and they will uh, they will mark one of the three locations for the Prop Taker to spawn. Uh, 
One of them is pretty far away, the mushroom spot, but this spot right here is one of the better spots, like the beach, basically. Immediately throw it on your lead on call that I did not show you, um, and hopefully its AI is not dumb. So you might have noticed I didn't cover gas damage or cold damage. That's going to be from your elite on call. And if you don't have an elite on call, I'm sorry to say that it's very, very helpful and important here. But yeah, after you drop on the elite on call, it will take care of your arc wing, uh, the elite, uh, the trash ads, and then you are going to get your Prof Taker Arc Wing gun out. Summon your Necromech and jump into it immediately and do your charged ADS shot on each leg. Once that happens, the PT will launch out four pylons. This is where your Ogress comes in to kill the pylon through the shield. So as long as you get a, a relatively direct hit, the Nightwatch Napalm will burn the pylon down from outside. And then you're immediately going to do another PT um, arc gun DPS phase. There is no shield in between the first pylon and the uh, the DPS phase for those second legs. After that, now you get a shield DPS phase. Hopefully your elite on call crew member is not being dumb. And they can actually shoot the boss. Because, uh, again, we don't have cold. We don't have gas. Our elite on call crew member does. And the AI can be pretty dumb sometimes. So, as you see, contagions are doing blast damage and corrosive. Because we had exposure proc there. And it can go very, very quickly if you do these things that are being shown today. So, after you knock them down again, this is going to be the final pylon phase. Now, if you are using the Mazelon or, like, the Prisma Duel Curians or whatever and you are doing rapid-fire guns on these PT legs, it can actually phase skip, which is bad. It, it's good for speedruns, but bad for overall loot, because if you do enable, if you do activate this glitch from using a rapid-fire weapon, which you don't want to do, but some people do for speedruns, uh, it will make it where you don't get the actual uh, bounty reward at the end. So if you want to get a Radiant Relic, you want to get a Gyro Mag system, be aware that you need to one-shot these legs, or a glitch might happen that pre prevents you from getting maximum loot. Once you've done all these things, the PT is dead, and congratulations. You officially killed the PT and have every element covered. But if you just watched the video so far, you didn't have it all covered. Here's the final two elements here. It's with the Elite On Call crew member in our clan dojo. If you want to get access to this stuff, you need to go over and get the Rank 10 Command Intrinsic and go to Ticker. I'll show you where Ticker is real quick. But as far as what we have here, we got a Kuva Zar with a Radiation Element. The element's not too important, but you want to make sure you mod the Kuvazar on your crew member for gas and cold if you want to cover every element in the game. Ribbons don't work on these guys, but Bay of the Corpus does work. So, yeah, radiation, cold, gas uh, as well, and also impact. It will spam the shots and also reload that thing instantly. So, the best stats to go for on your, uh, your Elite On Call are going to be high combat stats, high endurance stats, and technically high repair stats. And you grab them over here. It is a daily rotating shop, though. So be aware of that, that there might not be god roll ones right here when I'm showing you. So we've got Mob, which is going to be two in the repair, three in combat, four in endurance, so not the best. And we've got Felas Jar, who has four in repair, but zero in combat and four in endurance. So these are pretty bad ones. You could technically buy a non-elite crew member that has high stats, too, looking for the prioritization of combat, endurance, and repair. So, none of these are good. I guess this one's kind of okay. Scholar Hexus. He's okay. But yeah, no god rolls today. So, be aware of that. It is rotating. And hope this video is helpful to you guys. The old PT videos are totally fine besides like a few little things. Like the arc gun element and also the companion being different too. So, if you have any other strategies that you like to provide for Chroma, uh, feel free to let me know down below. Again, I know this is not a speed run world record guide that is not going to be what Chroma is doing. Chroma is definitely slower, but he gives you more credits. So I find that more important in the long run for some players. So see you guys next time. Pure support. Take it easy. Peace.